Can you all hear me? Yeah. Um, I'm in the English department um, and I do teach composition, but in addition I'm a learning specialist and I work with students on their reading and learning strategies. Um, I teach, like for example, this quarter I'm teaching a learning community with a chemistry teacher and we're working with chemistry for health science majors, like pre-nursing. Um, so I do a lot of that and also teach for WSU at the College of Nursing. So a lot of what I'm going to talk about is uh, having to do with the brain and with learning and with processing. Okay, are you sure you can hear me back there? It's kind of hard to hear you. Yeah, is it? Do I need to turn it up before we start, Rick? That's just for the camera. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Then I'll really shout. <laughs> Everybody needs four pieces of paper, and I think we're giving them to you now. They're yellow. This is a, a workshop on taking notes, so we're going to take notes. <laughs> I'm going to walk you through, model for you how to take notes. Hello? She's got them. <laughs> but before I do, I want to warn you. There's bad news and there's good news about note taking. So I'm going to start with the bad news. Are you ready? All right. The bad news is that most of us are human and we have human brains. If you don't have a human brain, would you raise your hand? I want to talk to you afterwards. <laughs> okay, so because we have human brains, the bad part about note-taking, the challenging part, is that we're limited by what we call our memory processing. All of us have different types of memories, and psychologists have named them as, the, as such that we have an attention memory, a short-term memory, and a long-term memory. So, for example, when we're taking notes, if we don't pay attention and get down the information, well, it's gone before we even get it down. So we have to listen attentively in order to take notes, right? Once we do get it down, however, have you ever been in a situation in note taking where you thought, well, I understand that, that makes sense, and you write it down, but then you get home and you can't remember what it really meant? Does that happen to you? Okay, that's a failure in short-term memory. Short-term memory is where we organize, we place things, we make sense of them, and we learn where we want to put them. And if we don't do that, if we really don't do it anything to it after class, it'll be gone. Ultimately, if we're human, we have a magnificent long-term memory store, and our goal in note-taking is to get information into that long-term store. So note-taking is absolutely critical if we're going to process the information. So, so the bad news is we're human, but that's good news too because we're smart enough to figure out strategies to kind of trick our brains into taking good notes and learning them. Okay? So the workshop today is actually based on strategies that work with us instead of against us as humans. Okay, so far, raise your hand if you hear me back there. All right. Now, you start to work at this point, and what I want you to do is to take the first three sheets of your paper. Here's the top, here's the bottom, here's the left margin, and I want you to draw a line, oh, about an inch and a half down the left, and save about an inch and a half at the bottom, and draw another line. Okay, so it looks like this. If you can't see this, you have to cheat and look at your neighbor over there, okay? Just the first three pages. And when you're finished with that, you can look up and smile, okay? <laughs> Lots of frowns. <laughs> You can number the pages, one, two, and three. The fourth one is for a quiz. Whoa. So we'll see about your long-term memory here in a minute. All right, now take out your first sheet of paper, page one. And what I'm going to do is actually talk you through a lecture. I'm trying to proceed at a pretty normal pace 
to show you how fast you likely will have to write to keep up with the lecture. And so I'm going to ask you to write down what I've got up there, and I'm going to be illustrating, clarifying um, what I have written as we go. But your job is to get it down. Okay, is that clear? So the first thing you're going to write down is the focus. If your teacher is nice enough to give you a focus, that means this is the focus. This is the main point. So always get it down. The focus of this lecture, which you're going to write down, is the purpose of taking notes is to record what you're going to need later for processing. Okay. So you're going to write down what you need to learn later. It's the only reason we would take notes, unless you're selling them, which I hope you aren't. <laughs> you don't want to take them unless you intend to remember them. So this lecture has two parts, and the first part is telling you why you need to take notes. So part one, why take notes? We take notes because processing or learning will fail if A, it fails in short-term memory. So if we're not going to learn it right away, we won't learn it because of short-term memory. Short-term memory processing will fail if information is not understood. Like, that doesn't make any sense. Let me tell you, I'm sitting through that chemistry class and it does not make sense. I don't really understand it. I'm just listening to it. It'll also fail if it's not recorded or if it's not rehearsed or practiced. Okay? But right away, our human short-term memory doesn't get it. It goes in the ears and out the pen and it's gone. Okay? So short-term memory failure. Another way we can fail to learn or process from our notes is at the long-term memory level. And that can happen if we don't store or process information using a cue, C-U-E, not the kind at the billiard hall, but a cue meaning something that cues us in. And we have to store it under the right label or our brain can't find it or retrieve it. So long-term memory can fail if it's not stored with the right cue or rehearsed, practiced, so we can get it out again, retrieve it. Okay? Have you ever had that feeling on a test? I know that, I understand it, it was on page 98 and they talked about it last Tuesday, but I just can't remember. Has that ever happened to you? It's because you're human. Okay? Now, how many of you are keeping up? Oh, good, good. Again, I'm trying to go at a reasonable pace that I really would lecture at in a classroom. That's page one. Put page one aside. Notice that this is blank and this is blank. Take out page two. Now, to illustrate to you that I'm serious about short-term memory uh, and how fragile and limited it is as a human, I would like to play a little game with you. I'm going to call out some words. You don't have to write that down. It's just an illustration. I'm going to call out some words. And I want you, at the risk of falling asleep after a big lunch, I want you to close your eyes. <laughs> and I'm going to call words out that I want you to try to remember. But don't write anything down. OK? Is that clear? You just have to keep it in your head. All right, here we go. Pajamas. Relax. Nap. Snooze. Pillow. Dream. Sheets. Blanket. Snore. 
So, how many of you had lunch today? Yeah? Nobody? Oh, good. What'd you have? Did you have something greasy? Ooh, ooh, greasy. Not good brain food. Oh, wait, wait, I interrupted you, didn't I? Let's get back to this. <laughs> now, what I want you to do is try to write down the nine words I called out on your paper. Okay, who's got all nine? Ooh. <laughs> Who wrote down seven things? Eight? All nine? Let's hear them. That's okay. Did you say sleep? <laughs> Did I say sleep? Oh, oh, sheets. Did anybody write, she, you got them by the way, excellent, 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 woo, good job. Did anybody write the word sleep? Raise your hand if you wrote sleep. Really? Did I say sleep? No. All right, that illustrates what the brain is doing, and that illustrates what your brain does in lecture. The brain automatically wants to categorize, it wants to label, it wants to store, it wants to make sense of all of this. So you may be putting a word, a concept into the lecture notes that the instructor did not say and did not intend. You might be missing the point. Okay? So all these words can be categorized with the word sleep, but I didn't say it. Your brain said it. Okay? Now, what happens is if you're human, which we decided most of us are, that we'll tend to forget the middle your, yours were accurate, but you had them flipped and you had them all mixed up. That's normal because the brain remembers the, um, the first and it'll remember the last, but it forgets the middle. So when you try to retrieve it, it'll switch it all around and it'll come up all garbled, but you might have it, right? And that's exactly what happened to you. Seven to nine is uh, pretty much what we can re remember. Um, and uh, more than that, it just goes in the short-term memory and out the eyeballs and it's done, okay? It's a limited storage, part-time, temporary facility before we process, okay? So if we didn't write down all those silly nine words, we wouldn't know them on the test. <laughs> That's not on your quiz, by the way, okay? But some of you still aren't convinced. So I'm gonna, uh, as always, cite research. We always, you should always ask your teachers, well, where's the research to back this up? So here's some research. Two different studies done on why take notes. The first one involved getting a huge lecture class together and then dividing them into three groups. One third was told, don't take notes. Wouldn't you like your teacher to say that? You can't take notes. The middle group was told, you can take notes, but main points only. And the third group was told, copious notes, as many as you want, just write away. Just write every word if you want to, as much as you want to, okay? Three different groups. Now, I want you to tell me, if they were tested right after lecture, who do you think did better? Just call it out. The copious notes, any other? Idea the main idea notes? The no notes? Well, you know what? You're all right and you're all wrong because they did the same. So you might ask, well, why are we doing this class on lecture note taking when it didn't make any difference? So let's look at a different study. Because let's go back to that one first. What they did was to call all those people back. Can you imagine the you know, the logistics here. They got them all back in five weeks later, later and gave them the same test. And again, there was no difference. So no difference immediately afterwards, no difference five weeks later. Now, the second study. A big lecture class of students was divided into two groups. One group 
the first half was told, take notes any way you want. Copious, main idea, stick figures, whatever. Just take notes. The second group was told, um, well, if, I'm sorry, everybody was told that, but the first group then was told, after you take notes any way you want, we're going to let you look at them for five minutes, so before we take them up, you get to keep them. The second group, which also could take notes any way they wanted, we snatched them away and you couldn't look at it, okay? You took them and we took them up. So the only difference was the first group got to look at their notes for five minutes. Okay, got that? All right, now, the second group had no review, and after six weeks, what do you think happened when they brought them back together and gave them a test? Who do you think did better? They all took notes, but the ones that, the ones that kept them for five minutes did one and a half times better. I find that absolutely astounding. Of course, they all did bad, but the ones that studied them <laughs> did one and a half times better. Yeah, I mean, it was measurably better. The only difference was I got to do something for five minutes right after I took them. Now, if they didn't take them, they wouldn't have anything to work with. So are you convinced you need to take notes? Everybody's nodding, okay. so. That's part one of the lecture. Put aside page two, okay? Take out page three. I'm not gonna leave you there. Part two is actually gonna say how to do it. Hopefully I've convinced you to do it. Here's one way that'll work. I, have a st I don't see my chemistry student, but I had a student in the chemistry class who wanted to come because he's been trying this in, in this advanced chemistry class and says it's really working for him. I'm working with a medical student at River Point campus and he's trying this. Um, nursing students and also um, students in English 99. Lots of different students have found this helpful because you can make it fit your class and your, what your task is. So part two, how to take notes. It's sort of a simplified version of what's called the Cornell note-taking system that I'm going to show you. Anybody ever heard of the Cornell note-taking system? Okay, well it was developed at Cornell University, therefore, voila, the Cornell note-taking system. It was developed after World War II when these veterans were coming back from the war and going back to school and lacking perhaps some strategies for how to study because they were new college students, so there was some grants, you know, some money given to figure out how to help these adult students, um, but it's good for anybody. And by the way, um, for those of you, our Fairchild students, we're taping it for you um, so that you can watch this wherever you are, so we're glad you're with us, and, and uh, thank you for participating by video. Okay, here's the Cornell system. The first step is to record, write it down. You gotta get it down or you won't have it later. And that's what you're doing on the right hand side of each page. So you're leaving this blank, you're only writing over here. Leave lots of white space. It's worth an extra piece of paper even though nobody loves trees more than me. Ultimately it's using less paper if you take notes correctly and efficiently the first time. So leave lots of white space instead of all crammed together. Okay. On the right hand side of the page only. Indent, move over for subordinate ideas, like an outline. Then visually your brain right away sees what's the key idea and what's the supporting detail. So move over for subordinate ideas. You probably won't be able to do a lot of numbering and lettering the first time through. Um, that'll be done in a few minutes, okay? But just move over if you think it's a, a detail to support a main idea. Use abbreviations, whatever works for you. Okay, I've, I have students who draw pictures. That's fine. Whatever reminds you of what the teacher just said and encapsulates it for you, use your own shorthand. Okay, that's step one. 
I went a little bit faster than normal there. How many of you are up with me? Okay, good, good. I'm from the south, I drawl, so. <laughs> Next one, reduce. Now that is not um, Jenny Craig. It's what I mean by that is to pull out the key ideas. And that's what this margin is gonna be for. We're gonna do it together in a few minutes. Okay, you're gonna pull out the key ideas or ask a question. The third step is to recite, and that means to say it, practice by saying it. And I'm gonna show you in a few minutes how you can use your marginal marks to quiz yourself, okay? So that you know that you know it. I kind of changed this around and, and that this is the only one that's not an R and I called it summarize because that's so important to get a main idea statement. At the bottom of each page, you write what was on the page, the big idea. So your brain is not just getting trivial details, but putting it into a concept. So we'll be writing a summary statement in that bottom space on each page. Okay, are you with me back there? Okay. And then finally, I'll show you how you can use these notes to review, uh, ongoing review for a test. Of course, you're not going to wait until the night before. You're gonna be doing a little each day by quizzing yourself, at least three days in a row. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. Raise your hand if you're up with me. Wow. That's impressive, because I started going fast when I looked at the clock. Okay. Now go back to page one. So now it's after class. We assiduously took copious notes, focusing on main ideas in the Cornell system during class. Did you know you did all that? Now, after class, we're going to do something with it, like that group that was able to um, have five minutes to look at their notes. So when you go back and do the Cornell system, and you can do this along with me if you want, we look at what we wrote on the right-hand side. It's after class, I may have to look at my textbook. I might have forgotten some of this, but I'm gonna try to figure out what the main point was for example, let me model this first one for you. I like questions because they, they give a stronger imprint, a stronger impetus of, in the neural networks. Um, when they communicate across the synapse, there's a stronger chemical release. And so the questions help me remember it more. So I'm gonna write a question. Why uh, does processing, that means learning, fail in short-term memory. And there were, let's see, one, two, three, four reasons. I might just do this. Okay, so I wrote a question. And then likewise, why does processing fail in what? In the long-term memory. And looks like I've got two reasons. So that's kind of what's in that page, question-wise. And when I'm quizzing myself, this is what is so just nifty about this whole system. I'm gonna ask myself the question, why does processing fail in short-term memory? Do I remember four reasons? Does anybody remember them without looking? Probably not at this point. And then I can peek. Uh, of course. Now I can try it again until I can do it without looking. Okay? Then I'm processing. Same thing with this one, the short-term memory, long-term memory, and I'm gonna peek. Ah, I've got it now. And I'm gonna recite. That's what it means to recite. But the danger of just doing that is that your brain might lose the details. So I'm also going to do what down here? Summarize. So here's what I came up with. I'm, do, I'm doing this for you in the interest of time. Um, not that I, I know you can do it yourself, and I'm just modeling it. 
processing will fail in both short-term memory and long-term memory if no notes are recorded. That's sort of a big idea of that page, right? Covers the whole thing. It's the main point. It's the concept. And here are the parts of the concept. I could answer multiple choice questions about that. I could write an essay about this. I've got it. Okay, let's go to page two. Page two. This was just an example, and so uh, in, this is an easy one because I could just put example um, using sleep. You know, I don't have to memorize that. I was playing a game with you, so that's an easy one to annotate. It was a, it was an example of short-term memory limitation. And then I come down to this one, and I might do something like, um, I'm sorry, I'm doing this for you, but. I'm looking at the clock. What does research show about um, why we need to take notes? And there were two studies, first study, second study. So I could do it that way, okay? I could put uh, study one, study two, if I'm not sure what I mean by that later. Because again, I'm going to cover this up. What am I going to do when I cover it up? Quiz yourself. That's called recite. And for the, for the main point, I might say something like, research indicates reviewing notes after lecture helps you process information, or something like that. <laughs> okay? Got it? Page three. See why I needed this table? <laughs> For page three, um, what would be a question? I could just have one question, and what would, what would it be over here in the margin for this page three? What is the Cornell system? Yeah, what are the steps of the Cornell system? Yeah, what is the Cornell system? And then I've got, down here I could put one, two, three, four, five, and then I would say, oh yes, what are the steps of the Cornell system? There's no, 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 Okay, so I'm learning it. After, this is all after class. And a summary, the Cornell system, record, reduce, recite, summarize, and review helps you process your lecture notes. Isn't that slick? So now I have three main idea statements. And this is what I like best about this because you get to see the big picture. I'm going to read you all the main idea statements at the bottom of each page. And here it is. This is a summary of my whole lecture. Processing will fail in both short-term memory and long-term memory if no notes are recorded. Research indicates reviewing notes after lecture helps you process information into long-term memory. The Cornell system of record, reduce, recite, summarize, and review helps you process and remember your lecture notes. Hey, that's it. That's everything we talked about. Isn't that cool? You want to take a quiz? <laughs> Do you have any questions so far? Okay. Now, when I, while I get the um, quiz questions out, we're going to do it out loud because we're out of time. Oh, I know you're disappointed. but. I want you to um, put your pages in order, make sure they're numbered, and then um, take out your blank piece of paper and we're going to do this together. <laughs> so let's see if you can do this. The first question is, list the steps of the Cornell system. See if you can do that, knowing you haven't studied.
All right. Boy, you guys are good students. You're frantically writing them down. So, who got record? Yay. Who got reduce? Good. Anybody get recite? Good. Summarize? Review? Excuse me. Yeah, review. Who got them all? Good job. Excellent. Now, if you didn't, it doesn't mean you're not a good student. It means you just need to study. Well, hey, that's why we're doing this. Okay. Here's the second question. Um, oh, I forgot to tell you this one. This is one where you have it on a test and you say, not fair, not fair, that wasn't in the lecture or the textbook. And you're right, I forgot. Most new information is forgotten within 24 hours. And I forgot to tell you that depressing bit of news that if you don't do anything with your lecture notes within 24 hours, uh, you forget 61%. And if you don't do anything within two days, it's 84. And after three days, I think it's 98. I mean, it just the curve of forgetting just is astronomical and sets in within 20 minutes. So that was just some, some depressing news to convince you that you need to take notes. But I've already convinced you, haven't I? OK. So 24 is the answer there. One day. Um, OK, how does the Cornell system help you process in short-term memory. See if you can remember what we said there. There were four, but if you can get two, that's good. Whoops, short-term memory failure. <laughs> okay. How many of you put um, clarify concepts or understand? Okay. Uh, how about organize concepts? Record? Um, rehearse? Okay. So those are some words that were more abstract, and there's nothing wrong with you. You're human, and your short term memory just went out to lunch. It's done. So you would need to study that for a quiz. Let's try this. This may be a little harder, even. What are the cues that are important to long-term memory retrieval? In other words, if you're going to get it out of long-term storage, what do you have to have? <laughs> See, it sounded so simple. I understood it when she said it. <laughs> so we have uh, store it in a way you can retrieve it. In other words, know where you put it with a Q word, and then rehearse it, practice it. So those were some of the more abstract concepts that on the surface seemed simple. And isn't that true in a lecture class? You think, well, that makes sense. But then you get home and you think, well, what does that mean? I have to go to the textbook. So those are a little bit vague. And this is not to make you feel like you can't learn. It's to make you know that you need to take notes. <laughs> OK? And then. Um, that's it. So how many of you got 100? <laughs> hey, how many of you got at least 5 out of 10? Yeah. Good, good. I think that's excellent. That's, um, if you waited 20 minutes, most of you would get less than 61% for sure. Um, and so you did very, very well. Um, to recap, your brain is human. Memory storage is limited. We have to work with our processing what's human, what's, what's sufficient for us. To do that, we need to first write down lecture notes so that we can work with them later. The Cornell system provides some steps that can help you do that. Okay, that's it in a nutshell. Any questions? Okay, well, I somehow went five minutes over and apologize for that, but have a great day. Let us know if we can help you more, okay? Thank you. Thank you.